I am Mialo with Minimum Effort Maximum Derp. Now hear me out. This isn't clickbait. What I'm doing here is, well, I wish to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Starfire, the Tamaranian princess, DC superhero, and longtime member of the Teen Titans, is in fact a man. To clarify, my goal is to prove that Starfire is cisgendered, a cisgendered man, meaning he was born a man, uh, identifies as a man, and that all that is really going on here is a miscommunication. Now, before we get started, if you could subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video, it helps a lot. Thanks. So, you are now prepared to explain why I am neither a girl nor your friend? Now, first off, I should start with saying that since Starfire is in fact an alien from an entirely different planet, and not human at all, gender and many other aspects of this argument aren't going to be exactly the same with how humans are doing things. So putting our ideas on their species isn't going to be exact, but more of an approximation of whatever they got going on over there. So to get started, let's talk about what we know about animals. For one, the females tend to be larger than males in most animals, except for in most mammals, in which case the opposite is true. Males tend to be larger than the females for mammals. So let's discuss the question, are Tamaranians mammals? Now to clarify, Tamaranians are Starfire's race. That's what they call themselves. They're from the planet Tamaran, so they're Tamaranians. Starfire is a Tamaranian, so that nobody gets lost. As I am sure many people will point out, Tamaranians uh, evolved from a cat-like species, which is why Starfire is shown as a cat many times throughout the series. But it is important to remember that the species they evolved from aren't actually cats, but rather a very similar in appearance species to our Earth cats. They just look alike, much like the Marvel's Flurkins, the appearance doesn't imply much at all, and certainly doesn't establish them as mammals. So then, what does make a mammal a mammal? Mammals are characterized by the presence of mammary glands, which in females produce milk for feeding their young, a neocortex, fur or hair, three middle ear bones, a four-chambered heart, sweat glands, and specialized teeth. Now, as with everything in life, there are exceptions to these rules, but this is the general criteria for what mammals are. So let's take a look at these qualities and see if Starfire or any Tamaranian has these qualities. Number one, do Tamaranians have mammary glands? I tried googling it. And all I got was, for mature audiences only, content, and one article complaining about how inconsistent Starfire's breasts are throughout the comics. This person also put forth the theory that they aren't actually breasts, which I found interesting. The closest thing to evidence, if you could call it that, in favor to Starfire having breasts is a scene in Teen Titans where Beast Boy accidentally touches Starfire's Grebinax with his claws while he was an octopus. Someone's claws are on my Grebinax. <laughs> my bad. Aside from me being surprised that octopuses have claws, uh, many people believe that Grebinax mean breasts or buttocks. But if you pay attention to the scene, 
you can see Starfire rubbing his arm after the clawing of his Grebnax, leading me to believe that Grebnax refers to his arm. The Teen Titans Wiki defines Grebnax as a Tamaranian term for an unspecified body part, possibly the buttocks or breasts. But nothing has ever been confirmed. Now this scene is obviously intended to be an adult joke, but it's still a children's show. They're not actually going to make a scene where Beast Boy rips open Starfire's shirt and gets his tentacles all up in there. That's insane. Not to mention, you can clearly hear two pops as Beast Boy removes his tentacles. Typically, suction cups don't work on clothing. Now, it isn't ever confirmed what Starfire's clothing is made out of, but I assume it isn't a latex. He isn't a dominatrix. I assume. So without any real evidence that Starfire would have breasts, I'll just explain why the answer is no. Taking a look at Starfire's instincts when Starfire starts taking care of Silky, his pet maggot, we see Starfire starts to act extremely parental towards Silky, nurturing it, protecting it, bathing it, and chewing up food and feeding it to Silky. So I have no choice but to assume that their species feeds their young much like a bird would. So seeing as those aren't breasts, I will now refer to the Tamaranian chest bumps as chesticles. So then, what are those two chesticles on Starfire's chest? And why are they so inconsistently sized? Well, you may be interested to know that Tamaranians have yeah. nine stomachs. Never have I been so thankful to have nine stomachs. Now, where does Starfire fit nine stomachs? in that unrealistic waistline. Well, I have an idea as to where he could fit two of them in his chesticles. This would also explain why the sizing is so inconsistent. Obviously, it would just depend on how much he had eaten recently. And when I tried googling that, I just got more adult fan art. That does suggest that Starfire's chesticles increase in size the more he eats. So the art agrees with me. Two, the neocortex. The part of the cortex concerned with sight and hearing in mammals. Now I'm not a doctor, so forgive me for not knowing everything about how the brain works. But I tried my best, and here are my conclusions. I'll confess that Tamaranians do in fact hear and see things, but not in the same way that humans do. Tamaranians have the ability of super sight and super hearing, being able to see and hear from more than a hundred plus miles away. Now I tried to compare that to the animal kingdom, the best sight in the world belongs to the eagle, which is not a mammal, who can see a rabbit up to two miles away. And the best hearing in the world belongs to the greater wax moth, which is also not a mammal, who can hear frequencies up to 300 kilohertz. As for distance, though, it sounds like hearing depends more on how far the sound itself can travel, so I'm not really sure how super hearing is supposed to work, but clearly this is just because Tamaranian hearing works so drastically different from ours or anything we know of. But because their sight and hearing does in fact work so differently than ours, I think it is safe to assume that they don't have a neocortex, but rather something else much more advanced. Three, here. Well, this one actually surprised me, but Starfire doesn't actually have hair. Apparently, Tamaranian hair is made out of fire flames. They just make sure that their hair remains tame whenever they're just relaxing. Well, canonically, no hair. That, that, that part's canon. 
four, three middle ear bones. I got nothing. The only details that I could find are that their bones are very dense. And one time in Teen Titans Go, they traveled into his ear. But if you want to argue that Starfire has to be a girl, because I couldn't prove that he didn't have three middle ear bones, then, well, you are grasping for straws, my friend. Number, number five, do Tamaranians have a four-chambered heart? To start, I also want to quickly discuss whether or not Tamaranians are warm-blooded. Understanding that Tamaranians are literally on fire, their hair is fire, their skin can melt metal, they produce fire at will, it is impossible for Tamaranians to have any water in their system. Therefore, we can assume they aren't carbon-based life forms. If they were, they would likely die from just existing. They're likely going to be something like plasma-based life forms. Interestingly, this doesn't mean they can't be cold-blooded, for this depends on their environment. Warm-blooded just means that your body can regulate its temperature above its surrounding environment. For instance, a plasma-based life form that lives on the sun could still be considered cold-blooded just so long as it isn't warmer than the sun itself. So without knowing exactly what temperature their home planet Okara is, or what temperature Tamaranians are on average, it's hard to say if they are cold or warm-blooded. Seeing as the Teen Titans visited Tamaran and didn't die instantly from the heat, meaning Tamaranians are warmer than their climate, I'll concede and say that they're likely warm-blooded, even though the Teen Titans only visited Tamaran, not the Tamaranian homeworld Okara. That is the Tamaranian fire air. Quick side tangent, sorry. Uh, Tamaranians are originally from Okara, the 13th planet of the Vega system. They migrated a few thousand years back to Tamaran, the 8th planet. I just wanted to explain that so nobody was confused on what Okara was. But as for Tamaranians being warm-blooded, even though they are likely warmer than their climate, it wouldn't be accurate to say they even have blood. Something that serves a similar purpose, sure, but not blood as we know it. And they would still likely need some sort of circulatory system that would carry nutrients, but the whole system would work so differently than anything a mammal has, even if their heart equivalent if they have one, has four chambers. I don't think it is accurate to even call it a heart. Number six. Do Tamaranians have sweat glands? I can't think of any conceivable reason why they would have sweat glands. What would they even sweat? More fire? It, that wouldn't be a very good means of cooling down. Not that they need it. The only instance of sweating I could find comes from the original cartoon, and I don't know what to make of the scene. So basically, Mother May I is cooking the Teen Titans uh, into a pie. Starfire starts to expel some sort of liquid out of his face. But the scene doesn't make any sense. For one, we already know that Starfire has extreme heat resistance, and his body temperature is naturally hotter than the oven. Even if the oven was hot enough to melt itself, it still wouldn't be hot enough to hurt him. That and Starfire is the only one in the group sweating. The, the rest of the Teen Titans are fine. Mother May I had only just turned on the oven. It was still preheating. Now, given their feline ancestry, if they did sweat, they'd likely only sweat out of their hands and feet, similarly to cats. Which, of course, would make Starfire's hands and feet very clammy. Just piling on to why this scene doesn't make any sense. I have to assume it was a mistake on the animator's part. So my evidence as to why they don't have sweat glands is that they're on fire. That and they have no need for them. Number 7. Specialized teeth. I really couldn't find any information about their teeth. I saw some guy on a forum claiming they can unhinge their jaw, which is how Starfire could eat an entire pie in Teen Titans in one bite. But that doesn't help with teeth. 
From the pictures, their teeth look relatively like ours, except, of course, being super dense and heat resistant. If you want to say they're normal teeth, sure, go ahead, even though super dense and heat resistant doesn't seem very normal. I'll just chalk this one up to inconclusive, because I really couldn't find anything. So in short, no mammary glands, no neocortex, no hair, middle ear bones are inconclusive. A four chamber heart, no, sweat glands, no, specialized teeth, inconclusive. I have no choice but to assume that Tamaranians are not mammals. So since Tamaranians are not mammals, we can assume their species will likely follow similar rules as other non-mammalian animals. Non-mammalian animals, on average, having larger females and smaller males. Therefore, we can assume Starfire being male is more likely than not, especially when we have no evidence to the contrary. I have more evidence beyond just averages coming up. That then leaves the question, what are they? Amphibians? Reptiles? Insects? Well, let's take a look at Starfire's transformation into adulthood and maturity. Now, this is really quite simple. A giant chrysalis formed around him, and he had to break free in order to complete his transformation into adulthood. Now, this isn't 100% consistent throughout the Tamaranian species. When my sister had transformation, she merely turned purple for two days. And is even said to be rare amongst their kind. But the fact that it is even a possibility has its suggestions. Not to mention that as rare as it may be, it is common enough that the Chrysalis Eater, who was from an entirely different planet, knew that it was a possibility, and found it worth its time to stalk Starfire for the potential meal. The fact that forming a Chrysalis is a realistic expectation suggests that the Tamaranian people are in fact hyper-evolved insects. This is further proven by Starfire flying around outer space no problem without any need for oxygen. Insects don't have lungs and don't need oxygen the same way humans do. Biology 101. You know, insects don't have lungs. <laughs> they do still need oxygen, but they can go without for hours or even days. That and his bulletproof skin, dense bones, and super strength help him from exploding in the vacuum of space. Another interesting thing to consider in regards to him not needing oxygen is that oxygen speeds up metabolism and that animals with slower metabolism tend to live longer than animals with a fast metabolism. It's a very live fast, die young situation. So then what is Starfire's age? Well, he is 156 in Tamaranian years. But how long is a Tamaranian year, you ask? Well, in Teen Titans Go, a Tamaranian year is 164.79 Earth years which makes him 25,707 and one quarter. However, in the comics, a Tamaranian year is roughly 35 Earth years, putting him at 5,460. Either way, very old, further enforcing the idea that their species has a very slow metabolic rate. Maybe they evolved to process food differently than we did? So, while I was editing this video, I did discover that Tamaranian metabolism uses ultraviolet radiation, whereas we use oxygen. So yeah, they did canonically evolve to process food differently and probably more efficiently than we did. This also once again further proves that they don't have lungs since they aren't breathing in the radiation. They absorb it through their skin, which is why they wear so little clothes. This even makes more room inside of the Tamaranian body for more of those nine stomachs. Assuming the stomachs are approximately the size of one chesticle, I bet they can fit at least two stomachs per lung space. 
So with one stomach per chesticle and two stomachs per lung space, that accounts for nine stomachs, leaving three unaccounted for, which we could assume just are where the stomach would be in a human body, since the stomachs are a bit smaller. I'm, I'm sure they could fit roughly three stomachs in the same area we fit one stomach, if the stomachs were small enough. Which altogether accounts for nine stomachs. Now all of that combined heavily implies that Tamaranians are a evolved form of insect. Now among insects, the females tend to have a larger body size so that they can lay more eggs. I tried researching whether or not Tamaranians lay eggs, and the research was inconclusive because once again all I could find was adult fanfiction and various adult art. I am sure many people will be quick to say that there isn't any proof that Tamaranians do lay eggs, much like an insect would. So I'll remind you that there really isn't any proof that they have live births either. The only evidence we have that they go through a live birth is that Starfire refers to his birth as a birth. It is true that I was birthed, and on a day, yes. Ignoring that English is Starfire's upteenth language, and he would likely confuse the two words, especially if they had held a similar meaning for him, this doesn't mean that their species can't share similarities with our insects, seeing as the sea sea fly gives birth to live young, and the mother even lactates and produces milk for her offspring. Similarly, the platypus and echidna both are mammals who lay eggs. So whether or not they do lay eggs is actually of little to no importance for the argument I'm trying to make. Remember, Starfire is an alien. Things aren't going to necessarily work how we may expect them to. Taking that into account, everything I pointed out prior suggests that the males of their species are the small, feminine ones, and these big, muscular, hulking brutes are actually the women. Interestingly enough, one part of the comics may actually support the idea that the masculine members of the species are the females. Some of you may remember that Starfire has been married. Married twice, actually, but we're going to focus on the second marriage with the Tamaranian general, uh, Fizan? Fizan? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, so I'll just call her Fizzy. In New Titans, number 130, 1995, Raven, recreated in a golden form, stated that they were with child. Raven never specifies which one was with child. And Starfire stops her from saying anything else, saying, I want some good surprises to happen. Then Fizzy died when New Tamaran was destroyed by the Sun Eater, and the pregnancy was never mentioned again. Now, what seems more likely? That Starfire went down to his local Planned Parenthood and had an operation because he didn't feel like he could raise a child alone? Or that Fizzy was the one with child? It seems rather unlikely that Starfire simply had an abortion after Fizzy died, especially when they're trying to rebuild the species and their whole civilization after the fall of Tamaran and the fall of New Tamaran. They had a string of bad luck. It seems much more likely that Fizzy was with Child and their child simply died with her when their planet was destroyed. So now that I've shown my evidence that Starfire is a man, this leaves one last question. Every time someone refers to him as a she, Starfire could have corrected it. So then why isn't it ever brought up throughout any of the series? Well, the answer is obvious. Tamaranians learn new things through lip contact. This means the longer they keep the lip contact going, the more information they absorb. Starfire, when he initially learned English, 
did not have a full makeout session with Dick Grayson, aka Robin, but rather only learned the basics of the language. Learning that the words she, her, girl, woman, lady are meant for feminine things, and he, him, boy, man are meant for masculine things, and that everyone was already using female pronouns and other feminine words in reference to him, he would have just accepted it seeing as he doesn't know how the language works. There you go. It's a miscommunication. A language barrier. Starfire just isn't very good at speaking English. And he took pronouns at face value. So, Starfire is likely the male equivalent of a highly evolved plasma-based insect-like race. Not actually insects, mind you, just relatively similar. Now, I am generous, and I will share the best evidence I could find that Starfire is a woman. The absolute best evidence, really the only evidence I could find, is Nightstar, aka Mari Grayson. First seen in Kingdom Come, Nightstar is the supposed daughter of Starfire and Robin. She is from an alternate universe known as Earth-22, which is not canon. In this universe, Starfire died from a circulatory illness. She only shows up once, and that one time is in Nightstar's memories. It is never explicitly said that Starfire for sure gave birth to Mari, but sure, Starfire could be a woman in this not-canon story that takes place in an alternate reality. Nightstar could have also been some lost Tamaranian that they just adopted. Maybe Starfire was a xenomorph, and Nightstar just burst out of Dick Grayson's stomach. It's hardly worth discussing what Starfire could have been in an alternate universe, because he literally could be anything. I have no quarrel with people saying Starfire is a woman in my fanfiction. In my fanfiction, Superman is a Canadian, and instead of becoming a superhero, he just became the world's best lumberjack. Well, there you have it. My argument on why Starfire is a giant male cockroach, evolved from cat roaches. And just in case someone wanted to argue that Starfire is a girl because he is wearing a skirt, I should point out two things. A, the obvious fact that it's a different culture. Different cultures, of course, will have different traditions and different ideas on how to dress. Tamaranians absorb ultraviolet radiation, and their revealing clothing reflects that. And B, coming from a biological standpoint, it actually makes more sense for men to wear skirts than for women. It's better for testicular health, it increases fertility, and healthy procreation. Looks like the Scottish had it right with their kilts. And in case you're curious, yes, traditional kilt-wearing Scottish men do have healthier testicles than the average pants or jeans-wearing man. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you hate it because you can't come up with anything to prove me wrong? Maybe you need some time to delete some of that erotic fan art that you now realize is of a cockroach. Maybe you're gonna download some more because you realize that giant male cockroaches are your thing. Let me know in the comments. Bonus. So the live action Cowboy Bebop just came out a couple weeks ago and it was just announced that season two was canceled because people are pretty repulsed by most of it. But nothing was quite as bad as Ed. Pretty much everything about the live action Ed felt like a mistake. So I thought I'd take a quick moment to discuss Ed's gender too. So this doesn't require nearly as much speculation. Most characters refer to Ed as she. Ed's father, on the other hand, refers to Ed as he, but also says that he can't remember. But the creator of Cowboy Bebop gave an official word on Ed's gender, saying its gender is meaningless, we don't need it. He also said, I wanted to create a character that surpasses humanity. 
I personally think that he might not even be human, someone from outer space. Although I do find it interesting that the creator refers to Ed as a he, much like Ed's father does, I wanted to focus in on the idea that Ed isn't even human. A golden orange skinned humanoid alien with red hair sure sounds familiar, doesn't it? Oh, and there is that time Ed didn't die from eating that poisonous lobster sludge. Much like how Starfire used his nine stomachs to his advantage to avoid being brainwashed by Mother May Eye's food, it's just an idea, but could Ed be Tamaranian? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.